If you ask anyone what Ferdinand Marcos greatest achievement is you will get a host of varied answers. Many think it's his multitudinous public works projects including roads, public buildings, power plants, and universities. On this list the Bhutan nuclear power plant is touted as an accomplishment despite the fact that it was never even operational. Are public works really the greatest accomplishment of Marcos? What makes an accomplishment great? The great men of the past are men who transcended their nation and their culture and their era. Men who tapped into the eternal longings of humanity and have shown us what we are capable of. Think of the deeds of Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Plato, Da Vinci, Columbus, or any other man who has brought light to humanity. What did Marcos do that transcends the bounds of the Philippines and rises above all his other works? No one in Germany or the USA will be driving down roads he built or use electricity from power plants he constructed or study at universities he founded. There is only one thing that Marcos did which extends beyond the bounds of the Philippines and qualifies as a great achievement. He allowed Francis Ford Coppola unlimited use of the military to film Apocalypse Now in the Philippines. President Marcos and his wife were patrons of the arts. Imelda built the Philippine Cultural Center as well as the Manila Film Center. Marcos knew the power of film in molding society and encouraged Filipino filmmakers to improve their art. In at the 26th of September, 1970 speech before the Manila Motion Pictures Producer Association he said, When I speak to this gathering of film producers, artists and technicians, I am aware that I am speaking to a group whose work is vital and whose influence is enormous in our society. Those of us whose work is to lead and govern. Look to this community to provide our people a vital and purposive entertainment industry and to harness that industry for the task of building progressives and healthy nation. The present state of the industry, where it is indeed and how it is making use of its opportunities, suggest to my mind that there is a great deal that we can do to upgrade the quality of our films and to make them truly relevant to our lives and to our history as a nation. Philippine cinema has simply reached the point where it must either advance or regress, either live or die. It is for us now to seize these opportunities and make our film industry a truly vital force in the lives of our people and in the economy of our country. And I would like to tell you tonight that you are not alone in dreaming of this advancement, this concern, this hope, we share in common. Perhaps it was not what Marcos had in mind but during the 70s the Philippines attracted low-budget sleaze and grindhouse film productions from America. Apocalypse Now co-producer Fred Ruse cut his teeth in the Philippines making these types of films. These films would go on to inspire the likes of Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez. Perhaps Marcos saw some of them. Surely he saw both Godfather films and knew the name Francis Ford Coppola. The production of Apocalypse Now is the stuff of legend. Everyone went crazy and the principal actors were all stoned out of their minds during the whole shoot. Getting the film off the ground and greenlit was a chore as well. What Coppola needed was the support of the US military who had bases in the Philippines at that time. From the Apocalypse Now book, by Peter Cowie, pages 1416 we read, Still hoping for support from the American military, Fredrickson dispatched the following brief to both the Department of National Defense in Washington, and the Armed Forces of the Philippines headquarters in Manila. The story is set in Vietnam in 1968. It is about the demoralization wreaked by the Vietnam War on the young Americans who reluctantly served in the most unpopular war in US history. Nothing in it is derogatory to the Vietnamese nor American people, although its effect would be to question certain once popular values and attitudes that made the Vietnam possible. Fredrickson requested military technical advisors, military escorts, aircraft mostly Huey helicopters, ordnance, firearms, artillery, etc., military vehicles and a radio communication system. The project budget is $13 million, preparations and construction will take about 3 to 4 months. Actual filming, desired to start the 19th of January 76, may take anywhere from 4 to 6 months. Principal stars will be Marlon Brando, Stephen McQueen or Clint Eastwood, James Kahn, Eve Montand and Maria Schneider. There will be a staff of 65 foreigners plus about 500 Filipinos. As much as 2,000 local technicians, bit players and other talents will be hired. Locations for the filming had not been finalized. Pagsanjan, Los Banos, Batangas, Zambales, Davo, Mondora and Baylor are tentatively considered. Meanwhile Booth Ruse and Fredrickson had returned several times to the Philippines, crisscrossing the country in search of locations and dealing with the government. One of Fredrickson's best pals during his school days in Switzerland had been Giovanni Volpi whose family had founded the Venice Film Festival. During a trip to Manila, Fredrickson and Volpi met again by chance in the lobby of their hotel. 
They chatted beside the pool and Fredrickson explained his need to get the Filipino generals to provide apocalypse production with helicopters and permit access to their military facilities. He invited me to dinner that night, smiles Fredrickson. I went down to meet him in front of the hotel and there were these long limousines with flags on the fenders, and we drove over to the palace and had dinner with President Ferdinand Marcos and his aides. They put us in touch with the generals, and from then on it was pretty smooth. Coppola and Ruse subsequently had an audience with Marcos to formalize his support for the venture. So, in the face of continued aloofness from Washington, a contract was signed between the Philippines Department of National Defense and Coppola Cinema 7, dated the 1st of October, 1975. This imposed on the production no fee as such for the use of equipment and personnel, other than actual expenses and insurance against death and damages. Had there been no assurance that 20 Huey helicopters would be made available for the aerial attack sequence, the Philippines would never have been chosen as the site for filming and quite possibly the project might have been scrapped. What a coincidence that co-producer Gray Fredrickson just happened to run into an old friend in Manila. What an even stranger coincidence that this man happened to be the son of the founder of the Venice Film Festival and was able to set up dinner with President Marcos that very night. Could it be that Volpe was assisting Marcos with putting together the 1975 Metro Manila Film Festival? That is likely and would be in line with his desire to advance the Philippine film industry into the future. Filming the movie was, of course, a nightmare. Typhoons, drunkenness, drugs, uncooperative actors, pressure from the studios, and pressure from the AFP. On pages 49 and 50 Cowie writes, the Filipino Army and Air Force had, following Ruse and Fredrickson's negotiations, being placed at Coppola's disposal. President Marcos was involved in continual skirmishes with the communist rebel forces, and so the Huey helicopters assigned to Apocalypse Now were sometimes recalled at short notice throughout 1976. The first two weeks of April involved daily use of the helicopters on loan from the Philippine Air Force. There were only 24 operational Huey's in the country, and Coppola demanded 15 of them for Kilgore's dawn attack at Bela. After all, the US Army had ordered 838 Huey Cobras by the spring of 1968. The machines were painted with US Army markings in the morning and repainted with Philippine Air Force decals at night. On the 2nd of April, in the midst of rehearsing for a complicated shot, the choppers were diverted urgently to engage rebel forces in the south of the country. Marcos even showed up on set towards the end of filming. On page 94 Cowie writes, the loss of his leading man made Coppola even more defiant. He refused to shut down the production, however temporarily, and shooting continued at the Kurtz compound. Tavularis had constructed a kind of bunker at the very core of the complex, packed with wires and switches that enabled both lighting and pyrotechnics to be operated by remote control. On one of these March days, President Marcos visited the area and no explosions could be set off by the crew in case he thought it was a rebel attack. How fitting that President Marcos visited the set while scenes at the megalomaniac Kurtz's compound were being filmed. That particular set employed hundreds of ifugeos as extras and the atmosphere was very wild. Filming Apocalypse Now in the Philippines is best summed up this way. For Coppola, the Philippines was a cheap stand-in for Vietnam. Where else could he rent an army, build and destroy whole villages and enlist thousands of extras for pennies a day? Apocalypse Now had its premiere at Cannes on the 10th of May, 1979 as a work in progress but ended up winning the Palme d'Or. The film was a success upon release earning a Best Picture nomination but winning for Best Cinematography and Sound and has gone on to be included in many lists as the best film of all time and certainly the best war film of all time. Aside from influencing filmmakers and popular culture the world over the film also turned the spotlight on the Philippines film industry. The contract Coppola signed with DND Secretary Juan Ponce en Ryle set a precedent for future productions to be filmed in the Philippines. It was martial law and we had a contract with the Department of National Defense, explained Juban. Secretary Juan Ponce en Ryle signed. It was an honored contract. The guns came from the Philippine Army, the AK-47s came from the Philippine Constabulary, the trucks came from the Army Support Command anything they wanted was here. That contract was the first of its nature done and it set the precedent for other films, he says. Films like Platoon, born on the 4th of July, Coppola had a deal with Marcos, according to the documentary. Production was to pay the military thousands of dollars per day, as well as overtime fee for the pilots. In return, Coppola could use the government's entire fleet of helicopters, as long as they weren't needed for the communist insurgency in the south. Remember the surfing scene with Robert Duval? 
Charlie don't surf but Filipinos do. Apocalypse Now gave birth to Filipino surfing culture when a scene from Apocalypse Now was shot on an obscure beach in the Philippines in the late 70s. Little did the filmmakers know they were giving birth to the country's surfing culture. As the cameras rolled, local Filipinos like Edwin Namoro watched from the sidelines. Namoro was 10 at the time, and he came down to the beach every day to see it transformed into a battle scene, complete with an entirely fake Vietnamese village and helicopters swooping overhead. But what excited him most was the sight of the actors surfing, something he'd never seen before. When the filming finished, some of the crew left their surfboards behind, and my friend and I picked up the boards and taught ourselves how to surf, he says. We've been surfing ever since. Once they got the hang of it, the boys started teaching others, and as word spread, tourists began coming to the little town to learn to ride the waves at Charlie's Point, as it became known. Namoro was able to turn his passion into a way of making a living, and more than 30 years on, he still earns money from the industry he helped to create. Bela is the birthplace of Philippine surfing, says Mac Ritchell, a local tour guide, without Marcos allowing Coppola unlimited use of AFP equipment. During martial law and a communist insurgency no less, this film would not have happened. In light of the impact Apocalypse Now has made globally I believe Marcos deal with Coppola is his greatest achievement. Just imagine if Marcos had denied Coppola's proposal and he was forced to abandon the project. Horror.